There are no knowns is a phrase from a response United States Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld gave to a question at a U.S. Department of Defense, DOD, news briefing on February 12, 2002 about the lack of evidence linking the government of Iraq with the supply of weapons of mass destruction to terrorist groups. Rumsfeld stated. Reports that say that something hasn't happened are always interesting to me, because as we know, there are no knowns, there are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns, that is to say we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns the ones we don't know we don't know. And if one looks throughout the history of our country and other free countries, it is the latter category that tend to be the difficult ones. The statement became the subject of much commentary, including a documentary by Academy Award winning film director Errol Morris. Rumsfeld's statement brought much fame and public attention to the concepts of known knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns, but national security and intelligence professionals have long used an analysis technique referred to as the Johari window. The idea of unknown unknowns was created in 1955 by two American psychologists, Joseph Luft, 1916-2014, and Harrington Ingham, 1916-1995, in their development of the Johari window. They used it as a technique to help people better understand their relationship with themselves as well as others. The term was also commonly used inside NASA. Rumsfeld himself cited NASA Administrator William Graham in his memoir, he wrote that he had first heard the variant of the phrase from Graham when they served together on the commission to assess the ballistic missile threat to the United States during the late 1990s. Kirkborn, an astrophysicist who was employed as a data scientist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center at the time, Noted in an April 2013 tech talk that he had used the phrase unknown unknowns in a talk to personnel at the Homeland Security Transition Planning Office a few days prior to Rumsfeld's remarks, and speculated that the term may have percolated up to Rumsfeld and other high-ranking officials in the Defense Department. The terms known unknowns and unknown unknowns are often used in project management and strategic planning circles. Known unknowns refers to risks you are aware of, such as canceled flights. Unknown unknowns are risks that come from situations that are so unexpected that they would not be considered. For example, prior to the invention of the personal computer, manufacturers of typewriters probably didn't foresee the risks to their business. Contemporary usage is largely consistent with the earliest known usages. For example, the term was used in evidence given to the British Columbia Royal Commission of Inquiry into Uranium Mining in 1979. Site conditions always pose unknowns or uncertainties, which may become known during construction or operation to the detriment of the facility and possibly lead to damage of the environment or endanger public health and safety. The risk posed by unknowns is somewhat dependent on the nature of the unknown relative to past experience. This has led me classify unknowns into one of the following two types. 1. Known unknowns, expected or foreseeable conditions, which can be reasonably anticipated but not quantified based on past experiences exemplified by case histories in Appendix A and 2. Unknown unknowns, unexpected or unforeseeable conditions, which pose a potentially greater risk simply because they cannot be anticipated based on past experience or investigation. Known unknowns result from recognized but purely understood phenomena. On the other hand, unknown unknowns are phenomena which cannot be expected because there has been no prior experience or theoretical basis for expecting the phenomena. The term also appeared in a 1982 New Yorker article on the aerospace industry, which cites the example of metal fatigue, the cause of crashes in the Havilland Comet airliners in the 1950s. While the remarks initially led to some ridicule towards the Bush administration in general and Rumsfeld in particular, the consensus regarding it has shifted over the years, and it now enjoys some level of respect. For example, Rumsfeld's defenders have included Canadian columnist Mark Stein who called it in fact a brilliant distillation of quite a complex matter, an Australian economist and blogger John Quiggan, who wrote, although the language may be tortured, the basic point is both valid and important. Psychoanalytic philosopher Slavoj Zizek says that beyond these three categories there is a fourth, the unknown known, that which we intentionally refuse to acknowledge that we know, if Rumsfeld thinks that the main dangers in the confrontation with Iraq were the unknown unknowns, that is, the threats from Saddam whose nature we cannot even suspect, then the Abu Ghraib scandal shows that the main dangers lie in the unknown knowns that disavowed beliefs, suppositions, and obscene practices we pretend not to know about, even though they form the background of our public values. German sociologists Das and Kessler, 2007, agree with a basic point of Rumsfeld in stating that the cognitive frame for political practice may be determined by the relationship between what we know, 
what we do not know, what we cannot know. But Rumsfeld left out what we do not like to know. The event has been used in multiple books to discuss risk assessment. Rumsfeld named his autobiography Known and Unknown, a memoir. In an author's note at the start of the book, he expressly acknowledged the source of his memoir's title and mentioned a few examples of his statement's prominence, including this Wikipedia article. The Unknown, known as the title of Errol Morris's 2013 biographical documentary about Rumsfeld, the term known unknowns has been applied to the identification of chemical substances using analytical chemistry approaches, specifically mass spectrometry. In many cases, an unknown to an investigator that is detected in an experiment is actually known in the chemical literature, a reference database, or an internet resource. These types of compounds are termed known unknowns. The term was originally coined by Little Etal and reported a number of times in the literature since then as a general approach. A 13th century Persian poet, Ibn Yaman, said there are four types of men. One who knows and knows that he knows. His horse of wisdom will reach the skies. One who knows, but doesn't know that he knows. He is fast asleep, so you should wake him up. One who doesn't know, but knows that he doesn't know. His limping mule will eventually get him home. One who doesn't know and doesn't know that he doesn't know. He will be eternally lost in his hopeless oblivion.